What's up, y'all? Let's get straight into it. Ooh, smacked him. Brutal. But I am so sick of men. We're Trash sick of ladies. Men like are, you. and how hard it is to coexist with them Stop. in this world. Stop ghosting. Y'all better go cuddle up to Casper because we're gonna keep ghosting ladies like you. That's just how it is. I don't make the rules. I just enforce them. This ghosting culture has got... They are furious that we have walked away. Mm. Now, where are all the men, like the good, real men at? Where are all the good, real women at? Hello. Welcome to dating at 50. You don't get it when men say you're going to grow old alone with... I don't get it when I can't see where your neck is. Shots fired! Shots fired! Don't know where your neck ends and your back begins. These big back baddies always got the most to say. Cats. What finally happened was I kind of went on a hiatus. I was like, I'm, I'm just not going to date. The struggle is real, especially yeah. for me. They say there's no more men, but fail to realize that they did this to themselves. Facts. So when my husband found out that I had been cheating, wow. I really honestly felt like he wouldn't care. She belongs to I'm the and I'm single. She looked like Gary Busey's cousin. Them teeth were bigger than my dreams. And something that I quickly had to learn while dating at my 30s is that if you become a divorced mother in your mid to late 30s, I want you to recognize that you are going to witness other women who are similar to you, who are snagging the young bucks, okay? And I got humbled real quick this morning when my mom called and said that she made me an appointment to get Botox so I don't look so old next to her. This is just the reality, ladies, okay? And I don't feel like I even look that old for my age. But listen, when it looks like you could be nursing your son and your, your new man at the same time, this is a problem. This now you're a single mom. Now you're a single mom. <laughs> a problem and it's become a problem for me if they stopped treating men as disposable they wouldn't be desperate single mothers in their 30s facts gentlemen isn't it intriguing how they treat men like trash and then get angry when men stop dating them mm -hmm. they alone are the ones that caused men to go their own way and facts. get their passports they have no one to blame but themselves very true you be cool with a guy that makes less money, but he's very, he's a hard worker. Like he's ambitious. Yeah. Let's say he just started his own business, but he makes 45,000 a year. Would you date him? He wouldn't be able to afford my engagement ring. I'm getting an eight carat cushion cut vintage engagement ring. You make $45,000 a year. It would take what? You eight carats. You better go, you better go call up Bugs Bunny. If you want that many carats, there ain't no way a guy's going to want to wife you and get you a, an eight carat ring. Who are, who even are you? Four years? No. Eight years to afford Wait, how much? I, I don't know anything about ranks. How much? How much is that? About two hundred thousand dollars. <laughs> you are not worth two hundred rags. You want a two hundred thousand dollar? Are you insane? <laughs> Where do you live? Do you live in an apartment? Do you live with your parents? Do you work a job and make forty-five to fifty-five k a year? Then why do you deserve a two hundred thousand dollar ring? You don't. More than that, it's about the fact that you can afford that, right? I go to yoga with this girl with an eight carat diamond engagement ring. Yeah. And I the weed company and drives an Audi. So it's about comparison more. Comparison is the thief of joy. These women, they go out, they compare their lives to the women they go to yoga with. She's she has a guy and he has a weed company and she drives an Audi R8. You're not an Audi R8. You're a Toyota Camry at best. Shots fired! Shots fired! Just keep it a buck. More than just a, it's about the fact that you can afford that. I always find it amusing how average wow. women make insane demands. It, for like real. you must buy me a two hundred thousand dollar ring. But we want you to be a virgin. Oh wait, we can't get that. We don't want you to be overweight. Oh, we can't get that. We want you to be fit, feminine, friendly, cooperative, submissive, and have no children outside of me and you. Oh, we can't even get that. But you want a two hundred thousand dollar ring, bro. Make it make sense. When in reality, all they deserve is a ring pop. Additionally. <laughs> If you were to ask them to explain why they deserve these things, they wouldn't have an answer. Mm -mm, I'm me. They believe they automatically deserve these things simply because they exist. Let's chat about- Yeah, the universe owes you nothing. It owes you absolutely nothing. And life is a mirror, not a window. You are a direct reflection of the people that you will attract. You are what you attract, right? If you're making $45,000 a year, you should attract somebody else that's making $45,000 a year. Why, why in the world, why in the world would you ever be able to attract someone that is that high of an earner? Like, you're not on that level. How dare you expect or demand a man to come in that is on that level to want to come in and take you serious? Like, come on, dude. Exist. 
it's about more than just a, it's about the fact that you can afford that i always find wow. it amusing how it's crazy to me let's chat about dating after divorce like i'm a full-time mother i have three jobs trying to support myself and my kids we don't now you're a single mom now you're a single mom <laughs> we don't care Women are to blame for men and their dating lives. And it's because of the rise of the toxic feminine. I mean, what if I don't want to live the way you live? Oh, don't be ridiculous, Andrea. Everybody wants this. Not <laughs> your fault. You're right. It's not my fault. Bro, I'm going to give it that while. Growing the armpit hair out, gross. It's nasty, bro. It's your I am a slave to my husband. What? Women. Pick me. I think it's cool to treat people the way you want to be treated. The sad thing is, men who go their own way are labeled as extremists and terrorists by the Anti-Defamation League. Yes, that's wild to me. That's right, gentlemen. According to Wow, is a distinct faction of the manosphere here. I'll, I'll uh, do it this way. Is a distinct faction of the manosphere, the broad set of male supremacist, anti-feminist, misogynist, and sometimes violent extremist movements that exist largely online. The MGTOW movement began online in the early 2000s when bloggers drafted manifestos outlining their desire for men to separate themselves from women and form a single gender society. Is that really what we're advocating for, gents? Because I don't think that's the case. To them, we are all evil, horrible people. That's crazy. We Extremism, are... terrorism, and bigotry. <laughs> what? Practicing self-preservation by not dating or marrying, despite the fact that there has been no violence. Wow, that's crazy to me. <laughs> Shaming your man on the internet for being sick continues to be one of the lowest yet somehow most socially acceptable things women love doing on the internet. In sickness, oh, it's so socially acceptable to shame men in every form and fashion. How about his money, about his weight, about his height, about who he is, about how he dresses. But you tell a chick to put the fork down and then I'm a bad guy? What? We can You can literally shame men to do everything. Shame men about everything, but you shame women about one thing. Hey, just keep your weight down. I just don't want you to be overweight, and we're fat phobic. Like, come on. Medicine and health has turned into for clicks and cloud or else. It's funny how we always say that men are the most guilty of doing the bare minimum, but this comment section shows us that that's what at least hundreds of women are doing. Mm -hmm. I'd get irritated immediately. Would be my final straw because what is that? Take him to the vet. It's his time to go peacefully. I'm mad at my husband now. The way I would instantly file for divorce. Shaming your husband wow. because he's sick for attention is yet another reason why it's in your best interest to get a passport or stay single. Just imagine your wife pulling out her phone to record and post you wow. while you're on the ground coughing the because disrespect, you're sick man. instead of helping you because she wants views on TikTok. That's crazy. So I just came from a first date and I'm just gonna sum it up. It went well, right? A few moments later. So I just came from date number two and it just keep getting better. <laughs> and then he ghosted me. Do you ever get dressed and just be like, Is she wearing a bed sheet? Shots fired! Shots fired! Whoa. So confused right now. I look good. Today. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, but if a dude got online wearing a twin bed sheet, people would put him. Oh my God. People would put him down so hard. People would be roasting this man. Roasting this man. But this chick can get on. I'm big and beautiful. Girl, what? You got rolls on your freaking uh, elbows. What is going on? <laughs> I want to talk about being single and wanting to be loved. Boring. <laughs> is it because I'm a girl? I'm not a bloke. Like, that's just so cruel. Okay, so this is my first day on this apprentice job. This is like my first like proper job. Look, um, look, look, how, look how much happiness she has in her eyes. Look at the... The optimism that she has. I almost biggity bet you by the end of the day, that will be drained from her. 
um, and they've sent me to the shop to get some bits. So where they've asked me to get I've got a list here. Water, hammer, 10 foot fallopian tube, copper, magnets. <laughs> 10 foot fallopian tube? She has no idea. <laughs> Tartan paint and a long stand. Gotcha. <laughs> I, I don't really it. know what these are. My dad used to do like stuff like this. Um, so I thought like, oh, <laughs> following his footsteps. Uh, yeah, I think I'm at the shop, so. Yeah, go get that 10 foot fallopian tube. You're about to look like a complete idiot. Stupid. I'm gonna update you uh, when I've got the stuff. Uh, okay, I'm back in the car now. I went into the shop. Look, look, look how happy and optimistic she was and now she's got that thousand yard stare all of that happiness has just been sucked out of her because she she probably looked like a complete idiot when she's like i need a 10 foot fallopian tube <laughs> oh, oh, okay let's see let's see where this goes let's see where this goes literally just like found like the first employee because i don't i don't know what these things are i've never really done this before went in and just went to like the first member of staff, showed him the list and he's like, stop, he's laughing at me. And I'm like, and then stop I it. just like go around the corner and I just stop looking for stuff. And then I found like this guy, he looks like an older guy. And I was like, okay, this older man, like he looked quite like sweet. I was like, he's probably gonna like, hopefully like take pity on me. Tell me where this stuff is. Stop it. And then he starts like giggling. And then like these two other lads that like, come around the corner, they start laughing at me. They're like, oh, look at the list, look at the list. I'm like, what? Like, I don't know what this stuff is. Like. Then they look at the list and they're like, none of this stuff exists. And I'm like, what? And I like, have another look at the list. And it's like, 10 foot fallopian tube. Obviously that's not a thing. You are so dumb. Stupid. And they're proper laughing at me. And I've spent like so much time trying to get to the shop and then come back out. I've been out for like nearly two hours trying to get this stuff. I'm going to go back to the site and then they're all- <laughs> Two hours to get 10 things. <laughs> I need a hammer, uh, some nails, um, it took me two hours. Goodness gracious. I'm gonna like laugh at me. Like, I don't know, like what's the point? Like that's just so mean. <laughs> like, is it cause I'm a girl? Is it cause I like, I mean, like I'm not a bloke. Like, is that what it is? Is that just, oh, I just take the piss out of her because she's a girl. Like, is that what, what it is? I'm this is what guys do. You wanted to work in a, a male dominated industry. This is what men do. We do this to each other all the time. <laughs> so cruel it has nothing to Aww. do with you being a girl they do this to everyone when exactly. they first join life would be much better if you stop having a victim mentality and learn to laugh at obvious jokes anyway guys make sure you subscribe Ooh, Jafar. Jafar. always gets me um that's the thing dude like it's a joke and men we laugh at this but these women they take it personal they take it absolutely personal. Uh, us men, we give each other a hard time all the time, and it's not a big deal. There was one thing he said at the very end that I, I want to hear one more time because it made me think of something, but I forgot it. First join. Life would have nothing to do with you being a girl. They do this to everyone when they first join. Life would be much better if you stop having a victim mentality. Oh, the victim mentality. So this is uh, my philosophy on the victim mentality. As soon as you play the victim, you give up all of your power. As soon as you take ownership over what's happening in your life and realize everything that happens in your life is your fault, you no longer play the victim. Like if something random happens and I'm, I'm sleeping here with Cass and a tree falls on our house and something happens to both of us, it breaks both of our legs. That's my fault. I'm not going to be the victim and be like, well, if that tree wouldn't have fell and this and that. No, I chose to move here. I chose to be here. It happened. It's my fault. As soon as I take accountability for it, I can't play the victim. I can't be boohoo me, and that gives me that gives me my power. As soon as I take accountability for that, anything that happens in my life is my fault. And I think a lot of women they don't do that. They think everything that happens to me, I'm the victim. I, it, it, poor me, poor me. It was like in reality, you need to take accountability for it. You chose to go get this job, right? You chose to put yourself in that position. So now you're vulnerable to be around these men and to get picked on. Because guess what? Men pick on each other at work. We do. It's typical. It's normal. It's like friendly banter, going back and forth, giving each other a hard time. You know what I mean? But women take it so personally. They can't separate themselves from the joke. They think, oh, they're, they're, they don't like me. Is it because I'm not a guy? And all this. Like, it's just a joke, dude. A 10 foot fallopian tube. They would do that to a random dude starting. They would do that to a guy, too. Not just you. 
they're giving, they're just, they're joking around with you, but you play that victim, you get, you play the victim, you give up all of your power. But as soon as you take accountability and say, everything that happens in my life is my fault, you have the power back and you can move forward. So I saw a video the other day. It was talking about people that get addicted to things, right? And there's the three top things that people get addicted to outside of drugs, of course, but one of them is love. The other one is, um, oh God, what was the other one? Love, progress, and power. But it's, it's, it's love, power, and then progress. But as soon as you start getting addicted to progress, you will forget, like, it's, it's the whole thing of, like, fall in love with the journey, not the destination. But as soon as you fall in love with progress and getting better every single day, oh, my gosh, your life will be so fulfilling. So for me, being on YouTube, doing these videos, like, we've started to really progress and gain some serious traction. I'm falling in love with this process right now. Do I know where we're going to end up? I have absolutely no idea. I hope it ends up being great. I hope I can support my family from this and things like that, and we can do more of these, and I can start a podcast, and I can do live streams and things like that. But right now, I'm falling in love with this journey because it's awesome, and the progress is been absolutely great so i'm addicted to it i wake up every day checking my analytics just hyped to see what happened how many subs we've gained and things like that how many views we've got on a new video so i'm really thankful for you guys i really am from the bottom of my heart i really do appreciate it we've been posting since november of last year every single day for over six months and we're finally starting to get some traction so if you're if you're ever doubting yourself and saying hey should i start doing this yes start doing it do it every day get better every day it's like going to the gym go start doing it every single day and in the next three, six, 12 months, you're going to see so much progress. I always say, if you want to try something new, give it 90 days. And if after 90 days, nothing's happened, then maybe you should pivot. But for me, I started posting on Instagram years ago, posting every single day. And I posted every day for a year and got some crazy traction, started gaining a lot of followers, started getting a lot of views. So I was like, I'm going to do the same thing on YouTube. I'm just going to post every day for an entire year. And if it doesn't work, I'm just not going to do it anymore. But so far it's working. So take me as a testament, be consistent, do it every day, show up every day, work your butt off, love the people around you, be thankful, be grateful, um, and pray. I'm not even super religious, but I'm starting to become more religious as I become a little bit older and more conservative. Like I've been praying recently, been feeling really good about it, and I'm just very thankful. And do the right thing. It's so easy to skirk around and cheat and do the easy things, but like do the right thing because karma is real. And whatever you put out is what you're going to get in. Like I always say, life is a mirror, not a window. Hope you guys enjoyed today's episode. I will see you guys tomorrow, man. Peace.